shall we consciously thank God for the miracles that God has done in our midst? Let's thank him. Let's go ahead and give God thanks for all the signs and wonders. For all the miracles. If you are thanking God, you can do better than what you are doing right now. Open your mouth and tell God, thank you. What you thank God for will multiply. Tell him, thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' most wonderful name. Because you have thanked him for what he has done, he will do it in your life. In the name of Jesus. The things happening here, people should advertise. Most of you, you talk about other people's things. You don't talk about your own. With all humility, what God does here is very, very profound and very humbling. But many members will say, this will happen here, this will happen here. They wonder of what is happening here. Until you tell the world, the world can know. Let the world know what God is doing. Is that true? What you don't publicize, how will they know? On your social media platforms, send forth the testimonies. They are supernatural magnets for winning of souls. They are just talking about other things that are not relevant. God bless everyone that promotes the gospel. Through the things happening here, God is doing so much in this place. Very humbly, even me, I'm humble. But people don't most times don't share what God is doing. It's a church where God does incredible miracles, signs and wonders. The house of the apostles just continues here. To him we give all the glory. Father, speak to us in this church service. Let each one end the year well. According to your word in the name of Jesus. Give each one a testimony. Let yokes be broken. Lives be transformed. People be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Give me a big hand. And tell yourself I will end this year well. Say it and mean it. Every good thing God has said in your life, it will perfect it. He said, which had begun a good work in you. Ephesians 1, 6. I decree whatever good thing God has started. Before 31st this month, it is completed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As you have said, amen, so shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Enjoying supernatural favor. Enjoying what? Part 3. Life is for enjoyment. He said, I'm come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. And then the Amplified Classic said, I came that they may have and what? Look at your neighbor and say, God brought me here to enjoy. I don't know about you. But I'm to enjoy life. In order of John 10, 10. I will enjoy life. Personalize it. Say it a minute. Now, because you said you enjoy life, that scripture is fulfilling your life. Amen. To enjoy simply means to derive pleasure in something. Supernatural is something beyond the natural, above the natural, superior to the natural. Favor is special or preferential treatment given to someone. And the end is always the best in God's agenda. In man's agenda is the beginning. In God's agenda is the end. If you go to a party in the world and you come late, they'll say, oh boy, you came late. They'll give you remnant. But the party of God is the end. They turn water to wine. The best that God created was at the end. This month you will end it well. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So it's just for life favor, a special or preferential treatment given to you as a child of God through the application of God's word in order for you to derive ultimate pleasure in every aspect of life. If God wants to favor you, your background is relevant. No matter where you're coming from, God can favor you and take you from the back to the top. When he favored Joseph, he took him from the pit to the palace. Somebody is moving and changing position. Yeah. A day of favor is more than a lifetime of labor. 
When he came to Mary, she said she was highly favored. In Luke 1, 28, 38. Today, someone will be singled out for favor in the name of Jesus. Amen. When God favored Abraham, he opened the womb of Sarah. Today, whatever has been closed in your life shall be opened. Amen. Favor will make you prosper and succeed faster than without it. I said favor will make you what? Succeed and prosper faster than without favor. You can't work hard enough to get everything you deserve. If everything you want in life, you have to work for it, then you may not get everything. Favor is part of the thing that accompanies salvation. Is that clear, sir? No matter how wealthy you are, if you're not enjoying favor, then you're not a child of God. King Solomon was very wealthy, but Queen of Sheba came to what? Favor him. Before this service is over, you hear good news. Yeah. Israel labor ended with favor. In the first service, I said, what to do to enjoy supernatural favor? What to do to enjoy supernatural what? First, I said, you must be born again. Two, I said, you must be a kingdom promoter. Three, I said, you must increase in knowledge. In the second service, I went for that, what to do to enjoy supernatural favor? I said, you must be diligent. You must, enjoy, you must be a person of excellence. Those were the things I said in the second service. And I talked about the hindrances. I talked about pride and etc. Now, in this service, service, third service, what to do to enjoy supernatural favor? Number one, have godly character. Have what? Have godly character. Many want God to favor them, but are character deficient. A wise man said, Men of genius are admired. Men of wealth are envied. Men of power are feared. But only men of character are trusted. It's a men of genius are admired. Men of wealth are envied. Men of power are feared. But only men of character are trusted. Daniel enjoyed favor. In Babylon, that he reigned through four regimes, his credential was the feared God. He did what? And enjoyed favor. A purpose in his heart not to define himself with the King Smith. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. And in verse 9, God brought him into favor with tender love with the Prince of Enoch. God will bring you to favor. Yeah. Joseph was favored. He was a man of impeccable integrity. He feared God and God lifted him from prison to palace. In Genesis chapter 39, 1 to 6, this man, he said, Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, and the Egyptian put him on the hands of Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand and Joseph found what? Grace in his sight. He served him and he made him oversee over his house and all that he had he put into his hand. May you never disappoint those who put this under you. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in his house and his feet. Look at verse 6 finally. And he left all that he had in Joseph's what? Hand. And he knew not all he had. Save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favor. Integrity guarantees favor. Good character will always provoke what? Favor. Godly character will always set the pace and set you apart for God. May God favor you. Shout a better amen. amen. Stop cheating people anyhow. They shouldn't do business with you and their stories will come out. Stop telling lies when it comes to money. That's not how to be favored. Every man of integrity in just what? If unbelievers can trust you, you don't need to pray for favor.
Every thief wants a man who cannot steal from him. All the thieves are looking for people of integrity they can hand over their money to. Are you getting me, sir? There's no job problem, there's integrity problem. Today, people want quick money, so when they give even Christmas money, stories of all stories upon stories upon stories. He said he handed over everything to him. Let sinners hand over to you and they come back and say, this is what you gave to me. I tell that sinner, we say, look, sir, do you want somebody you can trust? Look at that church man. But today is not so. The church people are not even in church. They have only church when they come. They don't have church when they leave. No, it shouldn't be so. Let's walk in godly character. And fell full out left hand. Right. Shout hallelujah. In Proverbs 3, 3 to 4. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thy heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Let truth be true. Don't say God knows. And then nothing is true. All that you're talking is wrong. That is not Christianity. Are you getting me, sir? If you walk in integrity, walk in clutter, favor shall be your portion. You don't need to beg for it. People just hand over their tears to you. They know you can never do anything contrary to what they wish. I pray somebody will take God's word and change your lifestyle. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Do you know if a wife is God-fearing, the husband will hand over all his money to her without checking. You don't know? If your husband finds it difficult to handle his properties or money to you, you have a character problem. Don't say, my husband hide everything. He knows if he gives you that story. But let him give you. He said, my wife, give me. Immediately you bring it to him. Three, four times. No, the next day he will be the one to hand over to you. He said, hold. But when he gives you, he said, my husband, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Including you, the man. Your boss said, keep this for me. And when he says, right then, do you know me service some service groups? When they make their treasurer, at the they turn about it, he says, my child is sick. My, that is time, time. It's only that they want to give account. Child will be sick. No! They ask you to give account. Give it. Next day, they will carry all their money and put your hand. If Christians can have godly character, sinners will hand over their wealth to us. No thief wants another thief. All thieves are running away from thieves. The thieves, they want godly people. Now, our own church is only in the church. Outside church, no church. If you want favor, what do you do? Have godly character. And then favor will follow you. Shout hallelujah. Number two in this service. Be a problem solver. Be a what? If you want favor, be a problem solver. Problems are opportunities. Your lifting is in solving problems. The man Daniel was able to solve the problem of the king. Daniel chapter 2, 12 to 13, 16, 28, 47 to 48, from 49. Daniel chapter 2, Verse 12 to verse 13, verse 16, verse 28, 47 to 49. Shout hallelujah. When the king wanted interpretation of the dream, Daniel said, give me time. Daniel went and saw the face of the Lord as he was able to solve the problem. Let me read 28, 47 to 49 for time's sake. But there's a the God in heaven that revealed secrets now for the seven. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and the Lord of kings and the revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. Then the king made what? A great man. Why? He solved this problem and gave him many great gifts. I made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and the chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested, see favor, 
of the king. He said, Shed I mean, I go over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. This man saw problem, so it was easy. It was what? Are you hearing me? When you solve problem, kings look for you. Joseph, a typical example, solved problem for Pharaoh. And Pharaoh made him the prime minister. Somebody's appointment will come by you solving problems. The more problems you, you solve, the more favor you attract. Develop an uncommon skill in solving problems. Be an expert in your field. Don't see problems at disadvantage. See them as what? See it as opportunity to be lifted. Look at every problem as an opportunity. Problems break out your potentials. David and Goliath. When David solved the problem of Israel, David solved a major problem. Killing Goliath was a problem he solved for Israel. Hope you know that. You don't know? Read First Samuel chapter 17. 4. Write it. 4. 8 to 9. 11, 23, 25. For time's sake, I'll read only 25. When Goliath came and harassed the entire Israel, a promise was made that whoever brings this man down, three things will be done for him. Look at 25. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man is come up? That is come up? Surely to defile Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killed him, do you hear Israel talking? The king shall enrich him with what? Number one. Two, he will give him what? Number two. Three, he make a bad house, they will not pay tax. And the three happened. You know, Saul's daughter was given to David. Prayer without solving problems, you will still be on the floor. Your rewards in life, they are determined by the kind of problems you solve. So I hear. May you solve problems in the name of Jesus. Shout the better. Amen. People don't like to solve problems. They just want favor. The more problems you solve, the more favor you get. No problem. Some problems you beg for favor. You beg for what? Look for problem to solve around anybody. You won't beg for favor. So I hear. Anything you're doing, make sure you solve somebody's problem. Look for the problem your boss has. Solve it. Even if others are lobbying, stay behind. He will send for you. Let all politicians reach out hear me. Don't go to a political meeting. And be scheming people, solve problem. The person in charge will always look for you. Daniel did not go there to gossip. No position has gossip. They tell lies. You don't follow that group. Just solve what? Now, for instance, Nigeria has problems. If you solve problems, anybody in power will look for you, no matter the regime. Is that true? No matter they will look for you because the problem of Nigeria is so big that if you can solve it, anybody in power will do what? But you, you know what? You don't know how to solve problems. You gossip, you talk, you scheme, you kill, you shoot. No. You don't need all that. In your company, solve what? Problems. In your company, solve problems. Don't follow the bandwagon of gossips. <laughs> Deputy MD is a thief. Deputy MD is a thief. He's still our secretary, company secretary. Yes. Because you don't have anything to offer. Those who have things to offer don't gossip. Which time do I have to go and know about anybody? Do you not know anything about any pastor? When I'm busy with my work. You, when you are not busy, you have a problem solver. Everything you see, your eye will see. You see motor passes. This is the way this man is speeding. Just the speed. He's speeding because you are standing. Now, let me tell you a life story. If you're driving on a highway, you will not know everybody's speeding. But try to stand and watch everybody driving. You think they're all crazy. So this is the 
anybody has feeling because you are, I, you are just standing. When you are not making progress, you criticize everybody. If you two are on the highway, you won't have time for the next person. The reason you are seeing everybody not moving is because you are doing nothing. Hindrance to supernatural favor. I'll take one in this service. Every service I'm taking one. Number one hindrance. Refusing to obey divine instructions. Refusing to obey what? Favor will stop when you refuse to obey divine instructions. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, 22 to 23, And Samuel said, Had the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice, as obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is at the scene of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He had also rejected him from being king. Saul never followed divine word instruction. God has told you pay tight. I I I I I I I don't want to pay tight. I don't I don't believe I don't believe in tight. If you don't believe in tight, your life will be tight. No favor. Everywhere you go, you be you be people say go 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 go. Listen, if people are rejecting you, check your tight. Ask me, how do I know? He says, shall become a delightsome land. So when you are not a titan, you become a rejected land. Can I tell you something very, very shock you? Young lady, your pancake is not all attract men. In fact, if you don't pay tight, your pancake will make you look like masquerade. Because when you are a titan, he said, you shall become a delightsome. So when you are not a titan, when you see the thing that you, wear, you, you are put on a mask, it is not it's not makeup that makes a woman. It is the makeup of you and God. Not the pancake. Or baby pancake. You too raw pancake. When you go to the market, it is rub. Not the raw pancake. They rub God. They rub with it. They rub God. They rub God. <laughs> okay, they rub God. Don't be pancake. Let me wait in. Make it the rob, the rob God. In fact, a man who does not pay tight, you look like an arm robber. <laughs> when you appear, they think they be thief. You are not a delightsome land. You become a rejected land. Anyway, you go to say, go, 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 go. Most of us will keep talking devil, devil, devil. It's simple instruction, simple what? A driver carried me. I was for Femi Manuel. I went to preach for him. So a driver carried me. And as we were coming, he almost had an accident. The tires make bah! And I turned and looked at him. I said, You don't pay tight. He didn't argue with me. I said, You don't pay tight. Do you know why this thing happened? You don't pay tight. I was angry. I said, You don't pay tight. I told you, does not pay tight. But he has been driving for almost 20 something years. Your closeness to a man of God does not determine that you obey God. I said, My friend, this thing you don't pay tight. Call me. I have noticed once you don't pay tight and you, you call up and you call me, tire will punch you. I'm a covenant practitioner. And so, of course, now if you say, My God does not like me because tire have bossed him, he shouted on me on the road. No, your tightening is what is causing him to shout. Simple instruction. Simple what? He said, every time my God cannot even give me money, he'll be shouting at me. He doesn't give you, he gives other people because nothing glorifying your body. You disobey everything. Every instruction you disobey. Every instruction you do what? Disobey. Which man will favor a wife that disobeys him? My wife give me food. He said, two of us are mates. Go carry your food for kitchen. So the man will not be happy to give you money. For what? 
every woman obeys, they don't beg for money. Oh. They don't beg. Are you getting me? I'm standing before God. All my properties, I don't know one. Not one, I know where they are. I don't even know the color of the properties. You know why? That's what I tell my wife should not do. Your husband tell you, go disobey, go disobey, 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 disobey. disobey. I don't know one of my properties. What do I need them for? I don't need them. I don't know. The documents are not with me. I'm not interested. God has blessed me beyond properties. I didn't say you hand over your property to your wife, oh. <laughs> Listen, I didn't say I didn't say so. You should, you should know your own wife. You should know your own. You should know your wife. I didn't say so. You should know your wife. You should know your own wife. No, the proper sense, so, so my wife take. <laughs> there are women who are praying for their husbands to be alive, and there are women who are praying for their husbands to die. So you should know your wife. So I hear. When my health is challenged, you see my wife, you see as if she wants to die. Even me, I will make sure that I, she doesn't know. She said, My husband, it's not you to be sick, let me be sick. Because if I'm sick, you pray for me. You, you, you know, don't, she'll come to the, to the times. But some, even in the midst of your sickness, they want you to die. Love is not mild. Love is practical. Let me not preach. I think you have love this night. If you show true love to your husband, to your wife, favor will just come. A woman you love, favor will come. Favor will do what? She will want to lavish you with good food. Favor is natural. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So, obey simple what? Instruction. Both from God and from the person who you're getting favor from. You can't get favor from, I'll teach that in the first service. You can't get favor from somebody and you disobey the person. No, now. No. The person gives you simple what? Your boss tells you, I'll teach that in the first service. Your boss tells you to do this. You say, no, I won't do it. And you want favor? No, now. No. No. Favor is different from gragra. You say, what's gragra? Find out from dictionary. <laughs> Amen. I, you know, when you are not enjoying favor, you now use force. If you don't give me. A young man came to me long ago and said, they've appointed somebody, uh, local government chairman, that if he does not give them, he's a militant. I said, oh, so because they made a vision and you want to use your militancy to intimidate him. You were looking at me. I said, that's how you should you say, call yourself a Christian? He said, if you know, we know what you to do. I said, you see what? Go and do something that will make him favor you not to use force to pressurize him. And I said, if he tries, I'll pray you to death. He was afraid. And you know, I'm not joking. That you're a militant, I'll pray you. One, one prayer, i pray you die. But if he's a man of favor, his title will make the man to favor him. But not because of that he wants to use what? Bold face. My husband, if you don't give me, I can fight you. It's not, you don't need that. Just obey divine instruction. God will favor you. Your husband will stay where he is and remember you. Are the women hearing me? My husband is stingy. You are stingy. There's no husband, no matter stingy, that you will favor. A testimony I've shared it with you before when I said I gave 5,000, a woman came and gave me seed. Her husband gave her one million that same day. She said her husband has never given her money in his life. But when she favored God's servant, God also what? Favored her. So as the favor was not coming because she was not doing what was right. If your husband is stingy towards you, you are stingy towards people. So stop blaming your husband, blame your stinginess. Nobody they favor me. You will they favor. Okay. Oh. I think all these things are, are magic. What supernatural favor can do? Let me close with that one and then. What supernatural favor what? Can do. It can increase your assets. It can increase your what? Like real estate. It can increase it. Favor can increase your real estate. 
Access are increased with favor. Access are increased with what? Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 23. And of Naphtali, he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor, full with the blessing of the Lord, possess thou the west and the south. Look at Alabama property. How did it come? Favor. How did it come? Favor. By what? Favor. Today, you do. Favor will answer to you. You will get properties all over the world that you didn't bargain for. Shout a better amen. amen. Shout a loud amen. amen. There's a young man in church. I will show you who he is. We met in Canaan land last week. And he has worried me not less than six times. He said, my elder brother, United States, I've not come home close to 40 years. I know if you call him, he will respect your call. He, he, was, he, he almost choked me with him. <laughs> I said, this is your brother that you know. I know him. He used to be a, a, a footballer for a national team. He says, I call him. If he hears you, your voice, he will respect your voice. I said, leave me now. He kept pressing me. Queen Island, he followed me back to back. So I called him. I want my brother to come home. He has not come home for close to 40 years. <sighs> I said, give me the number. Let me not make it. Let me rest. He's in church now. I won't look at him, so you won't know him. <laughs> so I called him. I said, um, I said, so so person, he now left a message. I left him. I said, your brother gave me your number to reach out to you. Call me. He didn't know my background because he doesn't go to church. So, he now replied me back. He said, I'm busy. Mr. Ibiomi. So, I know he doesn't know me. For him to say Mr. <laughs> I didn't talk. They did not know the wife knows me very well. She's a minister of the gospel. In another church. He said, my wife said, do you know who called you? He said, my wife was always shouted at me. He said, do you know who called you? If you know who called you, you will nail down here. <laughs> he said, my wife shouted at me. He said, do you know who called you? That man who called you, if you know him, you will not say mister. The next call, he called me and said, Papa. He said, Papa, I said, laughing. I said, how are you? He said, Papa, he called me Papa over five times. <laughs> and he's coming for glory rain. <laughs> <laughs> he has not been to Nigeria close to 40 years. He's a known person. He's in his 60s. He has never been to this country about 40 years. He said, I'm, he's coming for glory rain. And he should know that already Christ has arrested him. But the favor came through his own brother. Junior, junior brother. Who felt that his soul should not be lost. I'll tell you that in the first service. Sometimes don't allow your brothers. Bring them out to be favored. Are you favor is only the matter. He has favored him to be born again. So I hear. Because without this his brother, nobody would have known. I wouldn't have. He, he kept pressurizing me to reach out to his brother. He said if I call him, he will not take me serious. But if you call him, he will be serious. And because of his soul, I was all out to call him for his soul. I'll teach it deeply in the fourth service. Sometimes you don't have to go out of your way to reach out to his soul so that his soul can be brought out to be favored. Is that true? It was his own brother who made him to be born again now. So here. How many want favor? Number one, what do you do? For this service. Uh, character. Number two, solve problems. How many of you now solve problems? How many of you be problems? <laughs> either you are solving problems or you are creating. <laughs> you can't be doing it. You are not solving problems or you are creating. Either you are a problem solver or you are a problem creator. You become a neutral. You are not solving problems or you are creating what? Problems. Some of us are creating too many problems. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. 
Shout a loud hallelujah. Take your oil in your hands. Praise the Lord. I'm getting a word. Be very serious at this moment. Everything that makes life uncomfortable. I speak with authority. In the name of Jesus Christ, that yoke is destroyed. It shall come to pass in that day. Whatever makes life unbearable, eating from hand to mouth, struggling as if nothing is working, I command it to end right now. When I flow by the Holy Ghost, flow with me. That thing that makes your life, everybody will put, you put in paper, they will throw your paper away. When you go to embassy, it's your turn. They say no more. Whatever brings misfortune, when others are being blessed, you will not be remembered. Whatever brings misfortune, under this anointing, that demonic yoke is destroyed. The power of the Holy Ghost that rests upon the oil you're holding. After the anointing is broken, upon that we upon that oil. I command this oil to be an oil of exemption. Amen. Every darkness that beclouded your destiny, that makes you to be hated by people. Today, that evil cloud is removed in the name of Jesus. When I'm left, whoever wish you to die, I decree their wishes to strike them. Please hear me. Don't wish the dead. Young, I'm, I'm talking before the Holy Ghost. Don't wish another man's wife to die that you get married. It's not of God. I don't know who is he talking to. I hear God. The death of a man's wife does not mean the man will marry you. You'll be surprised he will not even marry you. Whoever is with you such is ungodly, satanic, demonic. I hear God. I don't know who is thinking such. Don't think it. Don't think it. But if anybody is thinking such against you, I command judgment in this service. In the name of Jesus. In the same way to any man thinking a woman should die. This is the way to that man saying, let this man die for me to marry. I command judgment now. Amen. But every evil that has beclouded your destiny is today that evil is wiped off. Amen. A new glory upon you. Amen. As you are stepping out of this service, everywhere you turn, favor will answer. Your appointment shall come by favor. Amen. Your promotion shall come by favor. Amen. Your blessing shall come by favor. Amen. Your lifting shall come by favor. Amen. Your promotion shall come by, come by favor. Amen. Your admission into school shall be by favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you will marry by favor. Amen. You will marry by favor. Amen. You will marry by favor. Male and female in the name of Jesus. Our children will be diligent by favor. They will excel in academics by favor. If you believe it, say amen. The next property shall come by favor. The next blessing shall come by favor. Favor will make you to stand out. You will stand strong. Now hear what he said. This is 106 verse 4. He said, remember me, O Lord, with thy favor that I bear us unto the people. God will remember you now. He said, remember me. I say now, now, not after. God will remember you now with favor. 
Uh, it's strange. Somebody's deaf ear, as I was praying, got open. He said, even the rich shall entreat thy favor. There are people who others want to call and there are people who those people want to call. There are people you would have looked for. This week we look for you. There are people who call me. I can't share them in the open. I can't say such stories in the open. They say, sir, I'll be trying to reach you. I'll be laughing. Not today. Beginning. Those you are looking for, they will look for you. Listen to this message before you pray. How come Joseph was looked for by Pharaoh? Joseph was in prison. Was where? But God orchestrated a problem for Joseph, for Pharaoh, that he had to look for Joseph. Is that true? I decree a divine orchestration that will make people in the palace send for you. For your sake, God will organize things that will favor you. If you're a believer, say amen like a believer. Favor made laws to change just for Esther's sake. Laws were suspended. Nobody sees the king, but she broke barriers. After this anointing, laws will be suspended. Barriers will be broken. Your request will be granted. I say your request will be granted. Now, life story. Life story. I won't call the name of the university. One of the in fact, it's about the number one university in the world. Something happened. And then I prayed. And they said, we have never done it in 200 and something years of resistance of this university. But wave it off, you graduate. It's a very strange thing, which I can't go into details. But favor of me, they said, we've never done it in 200 and something years, but we wave it off, graduate. It was supernatural. Or conventional favor answered. What has never happened for your sake will happen. <laughs> if you doubt it, Joseph was not an Egyptian. He was not educated. He was not qualified. He came from prison. Whether committed or not, he was an ex-convict. How did he become a prime minister? Laws were finished. Favor. Say favor. <laughs> what you did not qualify for, they will announce your name. Yeah. All, all medical assertions, natural laws will suspend it to favor you. Yeah. If you believe, I say amen like a believer. Yeah. If you believe, I say amen like a believer. Yeah. If you believe, I say amen like a believer. Yeah. Take a little oil in your hand and say in the name of Jesus. As this oil touches my head, let every word declared come to pass in my life. And the words I will say also, all be fulfilled. Now pray for yourself in the name of Jesus.
in Jesus mighty name. I can tell you this is one of the best services. I hear God. This is our service. You will hear news. I mean good news. If you're in this service, you have not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Just accept him. And your life will never remain the same. Offer these prayers after me. Those who are not born again. Say, Lord Jesus, I've come to you. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died and rose to save me. Right now, with my mouth, I declare you my personal Lord. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. All of you that prayed that prayer, offered that prayer, keep standing, or let's take your seats. Please attend to them.